I want to overwhelm them with IRR, cap rate, debt coverage ratio, cash on cash, exit strategy. Hello and welcome. My name is Gino Barbara, one of the co-founders of Jake and Gino. And in this how-to video, let's discuss how to create an impactful brand to raise capital for your next multifamily deal. Now, literally, this video could be hours and hours long, and we'd only be scratching the surface. So don't worry. It's not going to be that long. I'm going to try to jam as much as possible in the next 10 to 15 minutes. I'm Bran. And you may say to yourself, well, Jake and Gino, you don't really raise capital anymore, do you? We've raised tons of capital. But more importantly, our community members have raised over $500 million. They've done over 75,000 units. And when it comes down to it, raising capital, building a brand, that's what we've done with Jake and Gino brand for the last 10 years plus, building that brand for the education company. And what we've learned on that side, it really transcends over into the multifamily space. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I think when you're going out there and you're raising capital, people need to trust you. And there's a lot of things that you can do for them to trust you. They have, need to know you, first of all. They may have to like you. But if they don't trust you, they ain't giving you their money. You need to show to them that it is an opportunity that you're presenting them. You're not asking them for their money. Here's an opportunity that I'm offering to you. You have to have a little bit of scarcity there. You can't be needy, but they need to be trustful. So how do you, how do you build that trust? Because it's really important. But before you build the trust, once they need to be able to trust you, you have to tell everybody, don't be afraid. One of the things that the community members struggle with is do I ask for money and go for money or do I need the deal? Well, it's all well and good. If you've got millions of dollars sitting in the bank, you may not need to look for the money. But if you're like Jake and myself and a lot of us starting out, we need money. So don't wait to start raising capital. Go out there and tell everyone, hey, by the way, name is Gino. Just started investing in multifamily. Just want to let you know. You don't want to wait until you have the deal, especially to friends and family. They, they, even though they know you, you can still offer them the opportunity, but you can't go to a total stranger in a 506B and say, hey, by the way, nice to meet you. Want to invest in my deal? You need to talk to that stranger beforehand. Let him or her know what you're doing. Create a substantive relationship, and then you can present the opportunity. So. One of the things you need to do is to tell everyone. That's how you start creating the brand. Let everybody know. How do you create trust? One of my mentors told me that you need to slow down in order to speed up. Now, you may be saying to yourself, what is that? What are you talking about? And that's what I said at first. I just want to let this person know about my deal. I want to overwhelm them with IRR, cap rate debt coverage ratio, cash on cash, exit strategy. And the person who's probably never even heard of investing is all of a sudden saying to themselves, what the heck is going on? I am completely getting overwhelmed here. You don't want to do that. You need to slow down. You need to be able to build that trust. And how do you do that? A couple ways. First thing, you need to understand when you're pitching or telling something to somebody, we have, and Oren Claff talks about this brilliantly. Go check out the podcast we did with him a couple years ago. Wrote the book, Pitch Anything. We have the croc brain, the midbrain, and the neocortex. Now, most of us, what we do is we have our neocortex, which is the logical part of the brain, the one that uses the processes, the computations, the higher level. That's the one we pitch from. So we're pitching from our neocortex brain to the person's neocortex brain. But the way the brain was formed, the croc brain is there. That's the reptilian brain. That's the part of the brain where that's the BS meter. That's the brain that keeps you alive. That's the one that's looking for all of the dangers. You need to get past that. And it needs to be interesting. It needs to be something different. And if you're overwhelming the croc brain, the croc brain is going to say, no, I don't want to hear this person. That's not, that's not, not going to pass the croc brain. So what you need to do with that croc brain is you need to start with a story, with an origin story. What I would do is I would have my origin story presented. I would tell them about multifamily, about why I got into multifamily. But more importantly, when you start talking to an investor for, for the first time, before you even talk about yourself, seek first to understand, then to be understood. It's so important to understand that other person. Let that other person talk. Ask them about their goals. Ask them about what investments they like to do. Ask them about their kids. Get to know them. Start building that trust. And storytelling is a great way to do that. 
And that's how you build the brand. I mean, I would love to see your brand put people first. That's what every syndication company, that's what every operator should really be thinking about when they're building a brand for multifamily. We're out there, we're being financial stewards. We are taking capital from people. This may be their life savings. This may be their retirement money. They're sending their kids to college. They're going on vacations. This is money that's near and dear to them. Think of yourself when you're going out and investing money. It's near and dear to you. So think of your brand as being a financial steward. You're taking that money. Let them start trusting you by giving you your story. My origin story of why multifamily, for me, it was real simple. I like to tell the story when I was in the restaurant business and I was in a parking lot eight o'clock on a Friday night at the restaurant, there's six inches of snow and I'm throwing salt out there in the parking lot. No one's in the restaurant, completely dead. It's another week where I ain't making any money. But as I'm doing that, my mom owns the restaurant building. And upstairs in the restaurant building, there's three apartments. And in those three apartments, one of the lights is on one of those windows. And it dawns on me, as I'm out here shoveling snow, not making money, my mom is at home, in her bed, sleeping, getting paid while she's sleeping. She owns those apartments. And it dawned on me, my mom was working hard for her money, but at that point in time, her money was working really hard for her. And that's when it dawned on me, I need to get into multifamily. I need to have my money working hard for me as well. And I think when I tell that story to a potential investor, they understand it. Multifamily investors make money in their sleep. That's the power of the origin story. You have to create your own origin story. Who are you going to speak to? Really think about why you got into this business. Why are you investing in multifamily? Why did you get started? I have an origin story for the education company as well. It's important you develop one and that's how you build a trust. And there's a little vulnerability there. I could go on with that story another 30 seconds or 60 seconds. I don't want to bore you, but I could really get into depth, really make them feel my pain of how every week is going, is I'm, on, I'm on the transaction wheel, the hamster wheel. I get paid one week, the next week I don't. I have to start over and over. And that's why I got into multifamily because I wanted to create wealth. You need to paint the picture for them and you need to get through the crock brain. Now, once I've shared that story, hopefully the crock brain says, okay, Gino, let me hear a little bit more. Then I can start talking about the deal and start talking about it, but it's always what's in it for them. What are they going to get from this deal? Not just for yourself, it's what's in it for them. That's really important, creating that connection with the story and vulnerability. I think the next thing that your brand needs, and when you go on LinkedIn, you'll see this done really well by a lot of people. You need a catalyzing statement. Thanks to Rick Sapio for that word, for that term. He's coined it, it's his trademark, but I love it. And what that really means is that catalyzing statement. What's that one statement that makes you stand out? Dominoes, get it there in under 30 minutes, right? There's a lot of companies that have their catalyzing statements. For Jake and Gino, we create multifamily entrepreneurs. That's our catalyzing statement. If you're out there raising capital and you're speaking to people in the military, we retire first responders. We retire people who protect our country. What is your statement that's gonna separate you from the rest? And while you're talking about that catalyzing statement, once you're telling everybody about these investments, start focusing on your avatar. And what do I mean by that? When I started investing in multifamily, I don't know if you know this, but I was the pizza guy. Jake was the drug rep. If we started raising money from day one, which we didn't, we started raising money around year five or year six. But if it was from day one, I would be speaking specifically to small business owners and even more specifically to people who own restaurants, people who own pizzerias, people who own delis, people who own service businesses like that, because I could speak their language. They could feel my pain. I could create contact directly specifically for them. So when I spoke their lingo, they connected with me a lot easier. And there was thousands of people out there. And Jake was the drug rep. Anyone in pharmaceutical sales, anyone in those types of sales, Jake could specifically target and talk to those people. What industry are you in? I was just on a podcast from the gentleman named Hannes Hench. He's a professional chef, private chef. And he had a podcast specifically to that industry. He had, he had actually pilots that he was focusing on, nannies, professional chefs, all that industry, which is a huge industry. They have capital. They don't have the ability to invest in multifamily, but he speaks their language and he can connect with them. So think about your catalyzing statement. 
think about who you want to focus on. Remember, Gino the pizza guy, Jake the drug rep. What about you? The next thing with your brand, start thinking about creating a one pager on the brand. Canva is really easy. If you'd like to get a copy of our one pager, just email me Gino at jakeandgino.com and I'll send you a copy of our one pager over. If you want to get a little more elaborate, create a credibility book. Now, a lot of our students in the community go so far as to, you know, creating websites. I think websites is actually, I mean, that's a no brainer. When you're first starting out, I wouldn't worry so much about a website. Get these other things done first. Get your messaging done. Get, and when people think about branding, they think about website colors. To me, branding is more the space that's occupying in the mind of your consumer. The space that is occupied in the mind of your consumer. What are they thinking about? when they think about your brand. That is truly important. And who are you speaking to? That's truly important in brand. So that's why storytelling is important. That's why the credibility that you bring is really important. That's why when you're discussing all of these factors that we're putting together here, who you wanna to speak to, telling everybody, slowing down, really people first, becoming a financial steward. These are all parts of the brand for a capital raiser that are so important. Now, once you've done all that, time to start creating some content. And some of you may say, I am petrified of getting in front of a camera. I still very uncomfortable myself. But do you want to be as our coach, Anthony Vicino likes to say, got to give him props. Our Jake and Gino coaches are amazing. You want to be the hunter or do you want to be the gatherer? The hunter of capital is when we first start out, we're going out there, we're hunting one at a time and bringing back the money. Whereas the, I should say the farmer, excuse me, the hunter or the farmer, the farmer's out there planting seeds, it's inbound. And, and how do you get that? You get inbound marketing, you get inbound leads by putting out content, whether you have a newsletter, whether you're doing a weekly blog, whether you're sharing other people's content. You could even go so far as to read a book and do a book review and share that content. You can do your weekly tips and every now and again, you can do a YouTube video. And oh my gosh, how about starting a podcast, a bi-weekly podcast, start getting some guests on. I know it's scary, but hundreds of thousands of people have done it. Like I said, and I will always continue to say, if a pizza guy and a drug rep can start a podcast without even knowing what a podcast was, then anybody can. And it's so much easier nowadays. Now, if you want some more information on how to start a podcast, email me, Gino at Jake and Gino Love to point you to some of the resources that we've used. It's so important to start getting your messaging out there. Everyone's online, everyone's on the internet. I think you need to be on the internet too. But before you start any of this, podcasting, newsletter, really put some thought and some energy and some effort into telling your story, into creating a story, into getting your business plan. Now we haven't even talked about buy right, manage right, and finance right. Because I'm just assuming that you know the business. I'm assuming that you have a business plan that you can convey. Now, I, I'm not here to tell you that you're going to go out and raise capital and not know what you do. I'm just making the assumption that you have a business plan, but putting that all together in a one pager, in a credibility book, on a website is important, but really focusing on building an enduring brand, focusing on people first, focusing on creating amazing content, focusing on really serving the customer, serving the investor. And that's how you build that amazing brand. Every time you have an issue, and we have a lot of issues in multifamily, don't put your head in the sand. You want a great brand? You go out there and you hit it head on. You don't hide from the problems. You wanna be transparent. You wanna be authentic. That's what you need, in my opinion, to create that enduring, amazing brand, multifamily, to be able to stand out. Now, I'd love to hear down below in the comment section, if you're watching this on YouTube, what are your thoughts on building a brand? What would you do to build that enduring brand? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to share it within the Jake and Gino community as well, because we're always looking to get better on this topic, because this topic is not just about raising capital. This topic is about building any kind of brand for any business, whether you want a personal brand, whether you want a brand for your, for your business, whatever it is, these principles are all, I think to me, they go all across the spectrums of business. So please leave those comment sections down below. And listen, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I could talk about brand for hours. I think it's such a powerful thing. And remember, you are your own unique brand. You are here with special gifts and talents that only you have. It is incumbent upon you to find out what they are 
and to share them with the world. Thanks for sharing part of your day with me, and I will see you on next week's How To. Take care, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode.